Well, Asian Nancy 70 is set to Beijing via P-Boss Alpha Departure, 6,000 feet, squawk 2157. Beijing, P-Boss Alpha, 6,000, squawk 2157, Malaysia and 370, thank you. 12.41 a.m. Saturday, March 8th. Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 takes off from Kuala Lumpur for what was supposed to be a six-hour flight to Beijing. 227 passengers and 12 crew members are on board the Boeing 777. For the next 38 minutes, all seems normal. The plane climbs to cruising altitude and is on a direct path to the Chinese capital. 1.19 a.m. Kuala Lumpur Air Traffic Control instructs Flight 370 to make contact with Vietnamese controllers. The crew confirms in what would be the final transmission from the cockpit. Malaysian 370, contact Ho Chi Minh 120, decimal 9. Good night. Uh, good night, Malaysian uh, 370. Two minutes later, at 1.21 a.m., the plane's transponder stops responding and Flight 370 disappears from Kuala Lumpur radar. Seventeen minutes pass before anyone asks about the now missing plane. At 1.38 a.m., air traffic controllers in Ho Chi Minh City contact their counterparts in Kuala Lumpur, who ask controllers in Singapore, Hong Kong and Phnom Penh if they've heard from Flight 370. None of them have. Meanwhile, we now know the plane made its mysterious turn flying over the Malaysian peninsula, changing altitude, disappearing at times from radar, only to reappear. Almost four hours pass before Malaysia mounts a search and rescue operation at 5.30 a.m., but the plane is still somewhere in the air. Finally, at 8.11 a.m., nearly two hours after it should have landed in Beijing, a satellite picks up a final transmission from the plane. Then Malaysia Flight 370 vanishes. Nick Robertson, CNN, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Hey, you guys, it's Donovan Sadiq from the Donovan Sadiq Show. We are doing a uh, podcast here from uh, Podbean, or Bean Podcast, which is another uh, platform that I use, and I don't use it a lot. And I need to start using it and kind of incorporating that. So we are now on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Podbean, um, Facebook, Google+, YouTube, and Twitter. So you can catch us all on those uh, different platforms there. Uh, rain, still raining here in Southern California. It's been raining and everything is literally saturated uh, my backyard saturated it's going to be a very very long week it's supposed to continue to rain until tomorrow so it's been raining for about a week straight which is uh, we needed in california i really can't complain about that also helps get snow up on the mountains and i'm just saying we need it because we have these really you know really, really bad summers it has been very very cold out here uh, my uh, rheumatoid arthritis is taking a very very bad hit i'll be going to the doctor uh, tomorrow to check on my uh, status in regards to that. But what I want to talk about today is something that uh, somebody's been asking me. Everybody knows I have a background in aviation. I uh, graduated from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and I got a degree in professional aeronautics. So uh, I minored in aviation safety and all that other good stuff. So don't like to brag, but I got uh, other uh, degrees, community college of the Air Force and aviation operations and aviation maintenance technology. That means I was an aircraft mechanic and I could schedule and do a lot of aviation operations stuff. So I have a significant background in that genre. But what I wanna talk about, somebody asked me about the, how many of you guys remember the Malaysian flight MH370 and that aircraft mysteriously disappeared over the waters of uh, in the Malaysia area the Indian Ocean area let's just say in general and somebody asked me they said Donovan you know you know what's your take on that what do you think about that and I said well hmm I think well you know did they ever find that aircraft you know and this person was under the impression that the aircraft was found and I told them no no. Um, one thing uh, people have to realize is we got to stop listening to the sound bites. You've got to stop overthinking things. What do I mean when I say that overthinking things? The simplest explanation is usually the right explanation. So let, let me give you an example. 
if you're on a commercial airliner that has average one hundred in fifty people on average let's just say that aircraft in particular was that they had two hundred and something people on it but i'm going to say one hundred and fifty people in the history of aviation there are certain dramatic things that don't change and when i was at in college i took a a class on aviation accidents that's one of the things we have to do to be professional aeronautics you have to take thing on aviation accidents commercial airline no matter where it's been in history there's certain things that are always found in a commercial air airline crash people number one number two luggage number three airline seats number four you find the black box sometimes you don't find find the black box number five Aircraft structural parts, wings, tail, engine, all these basic dynamics. Now, I, I named, you know, three to five things, whatever, you know, I could go on and on and on. Now, that is just basic. Now, airline seats, as you give in that, some of you that pay attention to the um, announcement when the, the light attendant's up there saying this is your emergency exit and this is how you do it and if we're going to water, put the thing on and blah, 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 right? Flotation device. Those seats are made to float. Now, a lot, a lot of people forget a plane is not a tank. A tank wants to be heavily armored. An airplane wants to be as light as possible. So a lot of things, you know, the lighter it is, the better it is. A plane is designed basically of aluminum or composite parts that make it super, super light but strong, okay? So when you're in a plane, it's like a balloon, and the, the plane will expand a little bit, and it, get, it hardens, and that's how it flies through the air because of compression, right? And um, yeah, so just think if you're a plane, and you're flying over the water, and God forbid something catastrophic happens. The plane goes down. As it's heading down, it hits the water. Sometimes, depending on its height and everything, how it hits the water, it's almost as good as hitting basic ground because boom and the, and the thing flats and never in aviation history has a plane crashed that didn't crash nose first okay it's very very rare now sometimes like on the air show you'll see f-18 or something it'll skid the uh doing a some kind of aerobatic it'll hit its tail and it'll tumble and that's a different scenario but i'm talking about a, a commercial airline it's like a lawn dart it always crashes in a nose first and uh, that's why I try to tell people, always sit aft of the wing because you have a slim chance of survival. And in some airline crashes, there has been people that have survived because they were at the back of the aircraft. So it's a slim chance, but it's a chance. So I, when I travel, I always sit aft of the wing. I mean, as far close to the back of the tail as I can, actually. And people say, well, why do you do that? You know, you, you used to fly airplanes and stuff. And I said, well, uh, there's a reason. There's a very, very good reason. So anyway, um, so when that plane is coming, it's flying over the ocean and it's coming and a catastrophic something happens and it starts falling. Choo, starts falling into the ground. Boom, it hits the water. Now, remember what I just told you. A plane has a lot of light things. So if it hits the water and, you know, water is a different composition than ground. So there's not really a lot of fire and stuff that's going to go into the water. But those lighter than things are going to start floating luggage some of the seats some of the flotation devices and because it's in the water and because of the waves and you know and the tides and stuff that debris is going to branch out all over the place and you're going to find evidence of an aircraft crash there's an old saying if a if a tree falls in the woods does it make a sound some people will say yes, but if you're not there, how can you hear it? You know, that's a lot of what if, right? So, if there's no evidence of a plane crash, there isn't a plane crash. So the guy was asking me, he goes, well, what do you think happened? I said, well, there's one of two things that I believe happened. Either a UFO swooped down and took this aircraft and it's gone. It just disappeared. The physics of the day just made it disappear. And I know a lot of people say, oh, no, no, I, I saw a news clipping of, uh, you know, where they found the wing. They found a wing. 
aircrafts have uh, nomenclatures uh, for their parts placed on it and listed on it. That case has not been closed because what they found wasn't what they found. You know, you can, you know, governments can all say, oh yeah, that, there it is right there, case closed. No, no, that case is not closed because if that was the case, they would show you specifically all of these pieces. Notice they haven't said a word about it since. So there have been theories that the plane was flown to Diego Garcia, which is a military base in the Indian Ocean and all these other things. And that could be a good theory. But I, I will tell you personally, uh, air disasters, uh, boat disasters in the ocean, there's evidence of people. So how many people did I say, let's say that's on that aircraft? I'll just say 150 people. Within days of that plane being missing, they couldn't find any bodies. What, the, the bodies just went straight to the ground. Any limbs, sharks, you know, over the wreckage. When a plane crashes, that plane had just taken off, had only flown an hour, maybe two hours at the most, and supposedly went down. Uh, where's the fuel slick? There's all these signs that you would have to look at and understand physics and how things work. The black box, where's that? Um, like I said, luggage floats. I mean, there's no evidence of a plane crash. So uh, as far as MH370 goes, that aircraft is somewhere. And they're not telling you where it's at. And uh, people say, well, what would be the motive for them to do that? Well, the motive would be to use that plane in another uh, flag operation to uh, jive people up. Um, so... Let, let me give you another scenario. The 9-11 Pentagon aircraft. It's 777, or no, 757, I believe it was, which is a very, very big aircraft. They're going to tell you the Pentagon, the most photographed and videotaped building in the world, in the world. They are going to tell you that a um, hijacker that took private pilot lessons down in Florida didn't complete the program. He just learned to take off. He is going to take a 757 aircraft, spiral it down from its uh, altitude flight, turn off the transponder, pilot it down, fly through all kinds of cables and telephone wires eight feet above the ground and hit the Pentagon in a circle. Now remember, the Pentagon is a reinforced building, very secured. It hits the Pentagon, boom, right? People are on board, same scenario. You have luggage, you have uh, airline seats, all that stuff. It hits the Pentagon, bang. But when you look at the debris, in front of the Pentagon, it doesn't add up. The size of the hole doesn't equal a 757. And let me tell you guys something real quick, and I want you to think about this. Really, really think about it. A reinforced concrete building and a 757 hits it. Bang! 757 is an aluminum aircraft. Physics would tell you the force of what you hit and the way that airplanes are structured, the engines are designed to shear off if it hits a force greater than its composition. So those engines are supposed to shear off and fall. That didn't happen according to, to what they're telling you. And the government will not show you one picture of the 757, even in its flight pattern as it, as it roars through. And uh, a 757, the most commercial airliners cannot fly any faster than about 525 miles an hour. And you guys actually believe that the airline hit. So let me give you another scenario real quick. Let's think, talk about one of the planes that hit the World Trade, uh, Trade Center. This plane is flying, same scenario as the other, the other two planes I just gave you. And aluminum airplane hits the World Trade Center. The engines don't shear off. 
It goes into the building and the government's reason that they're telling you is it was so hot in there that it completely burned up everything and there's no evidence of people, luggage or anything like that. Okay. Do you guys realize that steel burns to, to melt steel burns at I think 2300 degrees Fahrenheit even to get it to go? Now, the fuel used in aircraft uh, fuel is basically kerosene. Kerosene doesn't burn that hot. So that means kerosene doesn't even burn hot enough to burn a human body. And you're telling me that that airplane that hit the World Trade Center incinerated everything and every evidence. An aluminum plane... And if you saw the, uh, one of the towers as it goes through, it almost goes through the other side. Steel girders, aluminum plane, goes all the way through with engines that are designed to shear off through the, almost to the other side. You guys believe that? No evidence of uh, bodies, airplane parts, nothing. The whole plane just disappeared into the building. Out of all of the aviation accidents that has ever happened, planes that have flown into the mountains, all kinds of stuff like that, there's always been the tail left. There's always been luggage and, and wreckage spewing across. Even for small little airplanes, you'll find the tail and you know just parts of the airplane. But they're going to tell you that. And because of that, it was so hot that the steel girders came crumbling down. You guys actually believe that. And then here's another thing I want you to think about. They said one of the planes that had the hijackers, it just so happens that, I'm looking at my cat right there, it just so happens that as the plane is flying, you know, when they were doing their inspection and stuff, they found that one of the terrorists' passport and a bandana. Do you guys remember that? The bandana of the thing? They said, oh, it must have came out of the plane. <laughs> now, those of us who know aviation and have flown, and you don't even have to know aviation, if you've flown in airplanes, when you're at altitude or you're about to go to altitude, even if you're on the ground, you pressurize the aircraft. The aircraft is pressurized. How many of you have ever opened a pressurized door inside an aircraft, even if it's sitting on the ground? It can't be done. The plane has to be depressurized first. But the government is telling you now, if you remember what I just said about it incinerated everything and you know, the girders melted and all this stuff happened, right? Okay. They found a passport, which is made of paper, and they found a bandana, which is made of cloth. They're telling you that that stuff came out of the aircraft before it hit the building. How could that have happened. And guess who found it? Surprisingly enough, an FBI agent happened to be there and found this particular evidence that linked the passport to one of the hijackers. Think about that. Please tell me how can a hijacker who is bent, hell bent on suicide mission into the side of a building, the World Trade Center, is going to open his window, take off his bandana, look for his passport, throw it out the window, and continue on his suicide mission, and then close the window back up and, send up and continue on his suicide mission. I mean, it, take, it would take superhuman strength to do that. It can't be done. It just can't be done, you know? So uh, when all that happened, notice that they never, ever asked pilots, just general pilots, their position or their opinion on that because a lot of them would say no you that can't be done it just can't be done so if the plane incinerated all these bodies and it incinerated the plane how did the paper passport and the cloth bandana survive let's give the government the benefit of the doubt so how did that survive mm, now you're thinking think about it think about it Think about it. So people say, well, what do you think happened? 
uh, that's a false flag operation. It's a black op operation. And the CIA talked about doing that in the 1960s, uh, flying airplanes into buildings. And, you know, it's, it's an old thing. Now, here's another thing that people don't want to believe. But who was the manager of the building um, that got knocked down? George Bush's brother. George W. Bush's brother was uh, the executive manager or something. He had uh, managerial duties and was managing that property. What a crazy incident, right? Coincidence. Yeah. Now, remember, I told you airplane uh, engines, that's why they hang under the wing, are designed to shear off to make it more aerodynamically, you know, it, 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 there's a thing to it to why it does that. But if it does hit something, it's going to shear off and then they can uh, look at the engine in the investigation to see if it was an engine failure or if something happened with the engine. And they're designed to do that. And if you think those engines are only held by two bolts, two little bolts. So you're telling me that this airplane flew through a concrete building with girders, steel girders, and came out the other side of an aluminum building. Use your basic physics. You know, it's just basic physics, straight, straight out. But, uh, so, yeah, so let's give the government the benefit of the doubt. The two towers fall, boom, 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 whatever. Now, WT7, that was the third building that fell that day. Nothing hit it. So why did it fall? And it, and it fell at free fall speed. Now, the only time a building falls at free fall speed is if it was a time demolition and it's, it falls within its own imprint. And that's another thing. A building that is designed to withstand, when uh, the World Trade Centers were built in the 70s, it was designed to withstand uh, a hit by a 707 uh, aircraft, which is basically, if you've seen the uh, military KC-135s or the uh, Boeing um, AWACS planes, it's that airframe, looks like that. And uh, it was designed to withstand those hits. So the government is telling you they are authorizing buildings to be that high that can't withstand hits of that magnitude and they're going to fall right into their imprint. How many of you guys remember that fire in Madrid of that steel building? And I think last year in England, Britain, a building um, was on fire in England and it never fell. It never fell. Steel buildings that have steel girders are like bones within us. The outside might burn and stuff, but the building will stay intact. The only way those uh, things will fall is if it's a, contr if it's a controlled demolition. It has to be uh, uh, imploded at certain points that is going to bring the whole structure down. So just think of your own skeleton. If you didn't have the skeleton inside your body right now, you would be a blob walking around. That's exactly what happened to your skin. You would just be a, a basic blob. And buildings are the same way. The, the girders are the skeleton and they build around it. And when a building falls at free fall speed, uh, that's a controlled demolition, especially when it falls within its own imprint. That doesn't make any sense. So on 9-11, physics was not working that day at all. And if you believe that, then that's what you believe. So WT7, nothing hit it, and it fell. Here's what I want you to remember. Do you realize that when that, that building fell, in that building was housed the CIA and also a lot of Wall Street documents in regards to what was going on on Wall Street and all that other good stuff that like that. Now, let's backpedal real quick. How many of you guys remember the day before 9-11, Donald Rumsfeld, who was the uh, defense secretary, announced that the Defense Department could not track or locate $3 trillion missing, gone. Couldn't locate it. And hmm, how mysterious. The plane that hit the Pentagon hit the side that those records there were, were uh, being kept. 
Amazing. Amazing. Are these just coincidences? So people say this. They go, okay, Donovan, let's say, let's throw all your theory out. But what about the people? That's over, you know, 500 people that were just killed in those planes all over the place. Um, was it 500 people? Really, was it 500 people? I don't, I've been looking for lawsuits from the families and I haven't seen any. And then when I did a fire request to show me the um, videotape of the hijackers boarding the aircrafts, you guys have been to airports before. There's no, even back then at 9-11, and when you went into an airport, and because I always worked part-time at an airport as an operations officer, uh, even at airports, there were cameras there. When I requested the government to show me a video of the hijackers going through the security checkpoints and all that, and back then there was no TSA, but they did have private security that would check your stuff. Um, before they federalized it. So there, there was a TSA entity privately that worked at these airports. You guys all know that stuff. And the government says national security. They claim national security. I said, okay, you don't want to show me the hijackers. Show me one person on any of these plane manifests going through security at the airport, just anywhere, it, you know, anywhere in the airport that day, national security. That's the answer I was given. So do I believe that there were people on these airplanes? Uh, me, personally, I don't believe it. Were any bodies recovered? No. They're telling me, uh, experienced aviation guy who loves physics, I mastered physics in college, that kerosene fuel burned up an airplane and people, um, no, it doesn't work that way. And some parts of a uh, jet engine is made of titanium. How do you explain that being gone? So yeah, we have a, a lot of things to think about. And if you guys don't believe me, look this stuff up yourself. There's nowhere you can go in America now today without cameras uh, videotaping you. But that is an actual scenario. So, um, you know, and I looked at the record. I don't see families suing the uh, uh, airlines. There, there's been no big settlements that have been uh, put out there. Now, you get distracted and you get confused with the people that were killed on 9-11 and their families fighting for justice. Those people are still fighting for justice. Some of the people that were still in the building. But people say, well, Don, what you're saying is the government will kill its people. Absolutely. You'd be a fool to think that the government would not put its citizens in danger or even killed for a national agenda. There has been evidence that showed that Franklin Delano Roosevelt knew Pearl Harbor was going to happen. Do you think it was an accident that the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor and there were no aircraft carriers there, mysteriously? How many of you guys that have military background that has been in the Navy, and I've never been in the Navy, um, has a carrier group goes out without its support. Battleships were part of the carrier group. Hmm, makes you think. Makes you think, doesn't it? Vietnam, we got into Vietnam based on, we don't even know actually the, uh, the uh, gunboat incident, the Pueblo, or the Pueblo was later, but the, um, you know, with the gunboat thing that used that Johnson used as an excuse to go in there and land the Marines, and next thing you know, we were involved in that. Um, 2,000, 3,000 people to be murdered? That, that's, that's a small price to pay for a national agenda, an agenda for the corporate elite. You know, so what, what I try to tell people is don't overthink this stuff. The most simplest explanation is probably the most probable explanation when it comes to what's going on and what's happening. An airplane, uh, a airline, airplane that has passengers will always have debris that has luggage, airline seats, a tail, 
parts of the airplane and all that other stuff. Kerosene cannot melt, doesn't burn hot enough to melt steel. A building that just collapsed within its own envelope and nothing hit it, it doesn't make sense. And these are the things, these are the questions that you have to ask yourself about your own government. A good patriot always, always questions its government. I consider myself a good patriot. And I wanted to, uh, to bring that up and talk to people about that because I've, I've been asked about that uh, several times in regards to uh, uh, these aviation accidents. Now, it's funny, if you take other accidents, there was an accident in the Indonesian area, I think a couple of months ago, and they recovered you know, immediately bodies, debris, all kinds of stuff. But the MH370 flight, nothing was recovered. Zero. So where's the plane? A lot of people say that that plane is sitting in a hangar in Diego Garcia. Diego Garcia is on a biot in the Indian Territory uh, near India in the Indian Ocean. Now, people say, well, you don't know what you're talking about. During Desert Storm, I was stationed in Diego Garcia and I was there for over a year. And is that plausible? Yes. Absolutely. But let's say that I'm just a, a layman. I know nothing about airplanes and I take a drone and if you guys have seen a military drone, they look like small airplanes. But let's say I paint it in airline colors and it, it buzzes over your head and you're just a layman. How would you describe that drone? You would describe it as, I think I saw a Delta airplane flying over my head, an airline plane flying over my head. And that's what I think happened in these incidences. And there are other people like me that know aviation and know that the 9-11 situation is total bullshit. Total bullshit. Ask a basic private pilot. If you got your private pilot license, ask somebody who that you know is just flying a little Cessna and they will explain to you a little bit about physics and how planes work. Planes have to be light, light, light as can be, as light as you can get it, for it to be effective. And that's what I think happened. Do I think those people existed? I don't think they existed. They just told you that. I've looked at the records. I don't see any of those people that is so-called listed that the government has released families that are suing the government, suing the airlines, suing the uh, Boeing, suing the uh, uh, engine manufacturers. There's no litigation whatsoever going on. And that was the excuse to get us into Afghanistan and to invade Iraq. And all these people that have been killed, maimed, and we are still over there fighting 18 years later for the military industrial complex. Now that's just, you know, I'm kind of talking about the American people. Let's talk about the Iraqis and the Afghans. All of those people killed and we're still killing them. And now we're in Syria. Then we went over to Libya and I'm not anti-military and I'm not anti, you know, any of that. I'm just using my basic common sense saying, well, what are we doing? The military industrial complex, killing 3000 people to go over there and take their oil and do all that? Is that above corporations? Absolutely not. I have stock, I'm a, I'm a um, corporation part owner. Do I think it's right? Absolutely not. I just want the truth. And we have been put in a situation of fear to where we don't wanna know the truth even though the truth is right in front of our face, the most the most and easiest explanation is probably the most plausible. I want you guys to think about that. And I'm going to give you, give you guys a video as I go out. Uh, check me out on YouTube. Again, I'm on iHeartRadio, uh, Spotify, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, and Google+. And you guys just check this out for yourself. We'll give you a little clip, and you decide for yourself. Can an aluminum plane that is pressurized go through a concrete building with steel girders? Because 
again, even if there was a steel girder and a plane hits it, wouldn't it kind of shear off and turn a little bit? It doesn't go straight through the girder. Forgery. Audio forgery, just like I do this show in the background that's behind me. If you're uh, really skilled in that, it could be done. It could be done. Crisis actors. All these things can be done. Hey, you guys, uh, check me out uh, on uh, with Demetra K. Standard Time. We do the show, Don't Believe the Hype, Tuesdays at around 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Every week, check us out. We have a lot of uh, great topics, great subjects. Please, 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 you guys, if you're in the Southern California area, please be careful as you're driving and you're driving around. It is a mess out there. And if you have animals, please, it is cold. Just because an animal has fur on doesn't mean it isn't cold. I know people that go up to the mountains with jackets that are still cold. Let me give you a quick story. A feral cat came up to me about two weeks ago and his, I noticed that his leg was injured and my other cat seemed to kind of like bring him over like, hey man, come over to my house, come over to my house, you know. Uh, that's my bad cat, Tylen. And the cat came up to me and he was just meowing, meowing, meowing. Now, those of us that know animals, when a wild animal comes up to you, which is very rare that they're going to do that because they usually don't want to deal with humans, you know, they're on their own they're, and their situation is good. But if they come up to you, and, you know, obviously he needed help. So I had to address his um, wound and it's really cold out. So I put him in a box and got him a nice little spot, and everything. And, uh, you know, uh, situated and he stayed with me. He's been with me ever since. And I named him Black. He's a very, very, very good cat. And uh, he's in the garage right now. He won't come into the house. I'm not going to let him, um, you know, he's more than welcome to come in the house. It's a lot warmer, but he's got his little box thing and I feed him and things like that. But there are so many stories of people being so cruel to animals. And let me tell those people that are cruel to animals, you're going to pay. You are going to pay. We have a responsibility to take care of this planet. And, you know, for the people that uh, rape animals and just, just do the worst to these animals, you're going to pay. You know, but if you're looking for a furry friend, please do not go and buy an animal. They are some good animals at the animal shelter. I have received all of my animals from the animal shelter other than Blackie, who basically picked me and I didn't pick him. And um, I've got some great animals. I'm, I'm telling you, um, everybody loves Sweet Belle. Everybody loves her. So again, you guys, uh, I'm Donovan Sadiq, the Inland Empire Informer. We still got some work to do out there. A lot of corruption is still going on within the city. I'm still doing fire requests. There's a lot of stuff going on. I also am coaching in the community basketball league. Now, you know you have a problem when they're asking for coaches and they're asking that, is there anybody that can pass a background check that wants to be a coach? That's a sad commentary of where we're at as a people. And I didn't want to do it, but... You know, I ended up uh, doing it. I'm coaching in two different divisions. I have some great kids with me. Um, I'm a fundamentalist coach. I like to teach the fundamentals because as kids get older, they become uncoachable and they do their thing. But uh, I'm all for being involved in the community. So if you're not involved in the community, you might be part of the problem. It's e anybody could, uh, my uncle told me this, anybody can point out the problem. What is the solution? Can you point out a solution? And that's what I'm going to start uh, doing because I'm good at pointing out the problem. I'm very good at that. But uh, we're going to start uh, doing that. So, But I want you guys to uh, have a great weekend. A lot of stuff's coming up. I know the government shutdown is still affecting a lot of people. People out there, my brown and black people, if you do not wake up now, this is our third shutdown in three years over some bullshit. A wall, this man is holding up the government and affecting people's lives for a wall that is ineffective. They have discovered tunnels in Arizona, Texas, California, and guess when those tunnels are, are made? When they were putting up fencing, you know, in the 90s and the, the 2000s under the Obama thing, when, whenever they start putting up fencing, that's when they start uh, doing uh, tunneling, and they just found another tunnel. And President Trump was briefed on the tunnels and how ineffective a wall is. If we're going to spend that kind of money, which could go for teachers' pay, we could go for health care, which could go for veterans' benefits or you know, uh, helping veterans, homeless veterans, and helping homeless people, 
you need to spend it on ground sensors and the high technology things that can sense these things. And these tunnels aren't just like rat tunnels. They have Starbucks in them and all that other stuff. So uh, this man likes to waste money. I believe the president is an idiot. He has a, uh, they say he has the education level of a sixth grader. And, you know, let me tell you guys this too. When you are born into so-called wealth, and, you know, the wealth is, and I, I don't think that the Trump family is the only family that does what they do illegally and try to circumvent the system while the rest of us pay for it. When you're a rich person, they basically just pass you through the system. They're going to give you a degree. Yeah, he went to, he went to Penn State and all that other stuff. And he has a degree in economics. Economics. And he's doing tariffs. But he has a degree in economics. Think about that. I'm Donovan Sadiq, the Inland Empire Informer. I will be talking to you guys a lot later. So, you know, keep everything going. Keep your chin up. Get your shit together. Because this is not going to stop. 40% of the government has not been funded and has uh, not, there's still openings. And what I think what they're doing is they're saying, whoa, if we can work like this, then we don't need as many people. So jobs are going to be in jeopardy. We'll see you guys again next week.